<laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <clears throat> but by the way, I used on Twitter, I used the, your line about um, a podcast about hating. Well, oh, fuck, what was it? A podcast about hating the city we love. Yeah. No, the city we love good. to hate. No. Right? No. No, because no. we love the that, city. We just hate a lot of shit about it. Right? We hate to love Seattle. <laughs> That's no, wrong. no, That's no. You got it wrong. Okay. Let's. Can we play some music, maybe? <laughs> okay. Let's assume Hold some music just played. <laughs> now you're humming over the music that's playing. <laughs> I'm getting myself in the headspace of like. But there's a music playing in. right now. You're humming over it. You're ready. No, I, let's get edited out, dude. <laughs> And welcome back to Seattle Sucks, a podcast about the city we love. Oh no, we, the city we love to hate. The city, the city, hating the city we yeah. love. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Seattle Sucks, a podcast about hating the city that we love the most, Seattle, Washington. Woo! Hello. And uh, so I guess we can do some introductions here, this being our first episode, uh, episode number one. You probably don't know who we are yet. My name is Alex. I'm Greg. I'm Colin. This is John. We're coming to you from the highest floor of the Space Needle. <laughs> I'm looking out of the windows through the large neon green Starbucks sign. Uh, we're sitting around an octagonal table. There's a Starbucks in the corner of the room, and our barista is the Weedle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I thought you said you're from Seattle, dude. <laughs> Shit, my The crap. Weedle. He's, he's just been chained up here in the Space Needle all this time. Yeah, there's uh, people, you walk by the Space Needle and it looks like it's under construction. We've actually converted it into our own private recording studio. <laughs> this is our lair and the, and the, the Weedle is our castle freak. <laughs> if you will. All right. Uh, so hopefully that image is sunk in and uh, you kind of like painted a picture of, of what we are all about. Uh, <laughs> yes. Hell yeah, <laughs> crystal clear. <laughs> um, so in our, we recorded um, some teaser episodes that we released, and um, if you listen to those, uh, good on you. Um, but uh, what's kind of funny is they were very prescient because uh, one of the things that we uh, sort of harped on was how Seattle loves to hack its way out of problems and how uh, you know problems that are very serious and endemic to the society itself are being treated like little um, puzzles that need to be solved by uh, our millionaires that live here. Um, fast forward to today when I'm standing in line to get a coffee and the front page of Seattle Times is, it's like literally homeless, question mark? <laughs> we have an app for that. Oh my God. <laughs> and then it just has some, I guess, ostensibly homeless man holding up uh, an app or something like that. And I was just like, holy shit. Okay. Above the fold. <laughs> Front page. Oh, this is, yeah. 55 point font. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I haven't read this yet, but it sounds insane. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Uh, but yeah, we were just joking about us, uh, you know, the city, you know, hacking its way out of its its problems. And, and sure enough, uh, that's exactly what the plan is. Homeless, question mark. This Seattle startup has an app for that. Cool. And then the, the lead. Seattle startups are trying to draw in people who want to help, but don't know how. But can an app really get someone housed? We'll find out. <laughs> Do you want me to read through the whole yeah, article? Let's hear it. Yeah, I'm, I plan to interrupt okay. you. It's amazing. Uh, so. if okay. it's, yeah. I hope be prepared for that. <laughs> okay, so this is the latest uh, out uh, today, uh, 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo, uh, for the Seattle Times. This is by Scott Greenstone. <clears throat> Chris Sun was trying to persuade homeless people to accept free money, which, in this case, was a lot harder than it seemed. Oh, I'm huh. sure. Cool. Uh, as people lined up for lunch at the Millionaire Club in Belltown, Sun asked if anyone had heard of the Samaritan app. Some were apprehensive. So Sun explained, it's a cashless way to give directly to homeless people via a smartphone app. So you, the hairs are starting to, to go up on the back of your neck, but all right. All right. Well-intentioned. Well, yeah, and it's important to uh, note here that we already had peer-to-peer -peer payments, but we didn't have... <laughs> Peer to homeless payments. <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> ghetto wise. Exactly. Peer -to -peer payments. 
<laughs> Subhumans. I just got beer spit on me. Like, because you, you need something totally specific. Oh, yeah. To the non persons that only they're. That, because they can't be, like, dirtying up no. the public the commons no. that is, like, Square or PayPal or whatever. Uh, or what is the other one? Um, then Venmo. Matter. You Venmo. don't. You don't want their bits touching yeah, your bits, you'll see, right? Yeah. They. I mean, those they electrons. Like, never the twain shall meet. I yeah. mean, you guys, you gotta. You gotta wait. It gets better. Okay. <laughs> so much better. Uh, like, this next uh, sentence here is just. I mean, this just sums it all up for you. Uh, right here. <clears throat> Can I get one, man? <laughs> A man said. Uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> I'll say it again. <laughs> Can I get one, man? A man. <laughs> This is written so bad, it's hard to say. Okay. Can I get one man? Okay, well, stop laughing. It actually is a really shitty yeah, sentence. Shitty That's sentence. why I'm laughing. Okay. Sorry, I'm not laughing. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Can I get one man? A man in line said, yeah, son said, and held up a Bluetooth-enabled quote-unquote beacon for what? the man to wear. To wear? Now, <laughs> this, what do you mean to wear? <laughs> this is the bait and switch of Samaritan app, which uh-huh. is, uh, oh, yeah, well, you want an app to peer-to-peer payments for homeless people. Oh, yeah, just put on this <laughs> beacon first. It's a what? Co- it's a collar. What do you mean? What you no, wear no. a literal collar. Anyways, Fuck get, off. the next sentence is really good. You got to get the uh, next well, and no, You have to describe it. What, is there so, other pictures uh, of this shit? Yeah. All will be yeah. revealed. All right, all right, all right. All I'm coming down. Yeah. Yeah. down. I want to hear this. Okay. Um, also, I think I put a compression limiter on Greg's mic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was working because I just peeked the shit out of it. It sounded like it's supposed to work, but uh, okay, all right. Oh, that's that's the compression working. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, Uh, and so the uh, man responds, and it labels me as a hobo. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) The answer is yes. Yes. The answer. How many people did he have to ask to get that answer? It's just a yellow star that you put on your sleeve. (laughs) Oh my. God. Okay, so the article continues. Uh, startup culture is about solving problems. In eh, Samaritan's, it's mostly yeah. about making money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Samaritan's case, the problem is that in Seattle, most people want to help the city's unprecedented homeless crisis, but they don't know how. I think we've demonstrated that that's fucking horseshit. Yeah, that is on false. Last week, uh, when we read those next door. Uh, Posts from the like, people who wanted to round up and kill the homeless, but go on. Well, yeah, when you have a sick animal and you euthanize them, you're helping them, right? Like, I think yeah, that's I think the help that's that they're that, yeah. Okay, all right. No, no, okay, I see what you're saying. Uh, help them uh, into a tractor trailer and then remove from the city. But uh, so uh, Samaritan, which is the name of this app, right? Oh, Great. Oh, yeah. Fuck oh. Creepiest, <laughs> well, well, most ominous fuck, name no, for a homeless app. Sense. Holy I mean, shit, go, it's yeah, scary. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it'll yeah. kind of dig a little bit deeper into say about that. why it's called Samaritan. Uh, Samaritan isn't the only social venture with that mission, but if it's going to grow, it will need a team with non... It'll need a team... It will need to team with the nonprofits uh, that have been working against homelessness for decades. Pa- pause here. Okay, cool. Yeah, a couple of nonprofits working together. Great. Yeah, yeah, ne- which makes line. sense, right? Yeah, we're helping the homeless. People doing <clears throat> good things to help the homeless. Uh, I like it. Go on. Next sentence. Samaritan is a for-profit. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like this hour we're gonna make fuck. money. So literally skinning <laughs> off of oh, the oh, balls yeah. of that. So right, they're taking like a percentage of each transaction. Greg, no, uh, startup culture is about solving problems. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Want me to yeah, explain yeah, it yeah, to you right, again? Right, okay. about, the, uh, the problem is the homeless are getting too much of your donation. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so Samaritan is a for-profit, at least for now, and its relationship with nonprofits has been strained at times. <laughs> Yeah, uh. I wonder why. Okay, so here's how it works. Download the app, enable your phone's Bluetooth. Oh, I can't uh, Which is already perfect because, you know, homeless people have just <laughs> no problem getting, you know, phones and apps and keeping it charged, enabling the Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah it, it sounds it, like a real easy way for people to get oh, in. Oh, you're, you're misunderstanding. The homeless person doesn't get a phone. <laughs> they just get the collar. <laughs> you got to enable your Bluetooth oh, on your phone. That's right. Let you don't actually call. interact with this person. Okay, that's a good, that's a good yeah. point. Let me rephrase that. The, <laughs> your is the, uh, the benefactor, yes. I guess, in yeah. this case. So here's how it works. Download the app, enable your phone's Bluetooth, and if you pass a homeless person with a Samaritan beacon, the app notifies you. No, this can Hold backfire up. at all, right? No. This can't e- be used e- to like... E-panhandling. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like um, Tinder for homeless people, right? Like, you're near within a... 
certain <laughs> foot radius of a homeless it, person. Dude, it, 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 your phone activates, <laughs> and you, it's not like Tinder. For, it fucking is Tinder. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll get into this. Like, it is quite much like Tinder. Okay, if that's the case, then what? It, it's somehow it's going to get larded up with people who want to use it for a purpose it wasn't originally intended. Like Tinder is to find someone who's like on your block who wants to fuck right now, and it sounds like this is to like find a bum who wants a dollar. But like mm. the market and will find a way to use this technology in innovative ways that are like, Greg, you're limiting yourself. You got remember meritocracy. There's a there's mm-hmm. a component to this <clears throat> that yeah yeah right. John is, John is so right. the app go notifies on, you on. when a homeless person is nearby. Yep. Then you read their story and choose to oh, donate to them. You. So, looking at the picture what? right now, the homeless people create profiles it's fucking Tinder. on the app, Shit. which you then swipe through. It literally looks like Tinder. It has you a picture swipe. of the person yep. and their so, name on it. So, let me get this straight. This person is sitting on the sidewalk, and you walk by, and your phone buzzes, and instead of interacting with them, you get to pull out your phone, read about the person who's yes. sitting on the sidewalk That's next exactly to you. Right. We'll okay. verify that they're homeless and who they are. And <laughs> they might be a fake oh, homeless passed, person. They've, yeah. passed, they've been investigated <laughs> and had to fill out forms proving that they're homeless. Well, well uh, no, that, that, that yes. costs money. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're that, means tested yes. homelessness. Right, you're, just, you're limiting your imagination <laughs> oh about God. how deep this goes. Can okay. you read some of the, the, uh, the profile, Alex? Hold on, let me... So, uh, so there is, there's so, like a whole story of this woman, Nicole. This is featured in the Times. But then at the end, there's an editor's note, which is like, so the app people are then commenting on their story to be like, yeah, she actually is nice too. Like, don't just, <laughs> don't buy the hype from the, you know, like, just, don't, this don't is take her word for it. This is basically like an advertising platform. Well, but I wish someone would like chime in and like give a testimonial on my Tinder profile because i think it probably does just sound like hyped bullshit it's like and i just think when are they going to bring a voting system and you like vote down or vote and then like if you get too many it's like an uber driver if you get too many bad reviews you just get pulled (laughs) off the system they're like you know marcy she's really nice but she's just not delivering people are just passing her by it's it's also a bit like the roman coliseum where you know thumbs up and they live Jesus, go on. I could read her story, but it's just pretty sad. Okay. Yeah. It well, really that, is just really sad. Gonna, yeah. yeah. That, there but, really are people who are homeless who but, have miserable lives that we're, that this is not going to Oh, God. Just go on. Okay. Please. So, uh, okay. So you find the person, you read their story, you decide if they are worthy enough to, to donate to. Uh, you donate, and then donations can be redeemed at participating restaurants and stores, including Safeway. But not for alcohol. Oh, oh my! It's not even, they don't even get the fucking cash. You don't get cash. You gotta check in to get the cash. You have to yeah. get like, yeah. you have to buy the like store brand like <laughs> rice and beans or something. Mm, like, I think you, they'll just give you the money at Safeway if you show them the app. But really? you put the six pack but down and your beacon just starts. <laughs> 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 and then. The explosive charge embedded yeah. in it detonates and you're dead. Oh, and you know problem what? Solved. I think you're right. I think they don't actually get any money. Yeah, they, no, they get they, store credit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To buy pro- only food, like um, foodstuffs, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Like probably, no, probably no, I, if, they, like, if the person, if the checker does try to scan a six pack, it's going to like, it's going to come up with a warning dialogue that's like, listen, you can't give, you unless, so, this, unless this person has like, Hard paper American currency. They can't pay for this yeah. beer. I still can't get past the the caller. I mean, like of all the Fuck. indignities of being homeless, and then this dude comes up and it's like, "Why don't you wear this beacon around with you in it's, order to get food?" I would. You know, food. it's more like a necklace <laughs> than a collar. A but it is it's worn around the neck. It's a charm. It's a luck charm. The problem this is solving, well, it doesn't exist. But it, the only thing this is addressing is. The nature of panhandling, not of yeah, homelessness, absolutely, yep. But of, I'm just saying, like that is <laughs> not a, a two real solution. Two things to say about that one. First of all, I think the right word to use is to disrupt uh, panhandling. <laughs> no, disrupting uh, panhandling. Oh, that's what uh, I, 
to give it. Sorry, I don't have the, the whole VC and like, also, uh, and, jargon and then, down. And then I think we were sort of making an assumption that it was to solve homelessness. The article, the title is just homeless. This Seattle has a startup has an app for that. Uh, for, so it's like, oh, yeah, you are know, you if, homeless? If Here you they go. They solved homelessness. <laughs> they they work themselves out of a market. Basically, yeah. The app they isn't to solve exactly. it. It's to it's oh, yeah. Fuck. Well, it's just it, to uh, enable it. Maybe and, I guess. And to your point, Greg, this is really about <clears throat> and like all these startup products now, they're it's about alleviating the stress and agony that you feel having to interact with a homeless person, right? Yeah. It's ma- it's well, just with ma- people in general. Yeah, yeah, it's just making your life as the moneyed person easier. It's not really making the homeless person's life. Easier. Right. It's about yeah, you get to get have the like moral experience of giving giving money, money to a pauper yeah. without having to look them in the eye or speak to right. them. Yeah. Which actually you don't have to do Anyway, and plenty of people don't, but like you don't even have to like get within arm's reach of them. Right, you right. just have to get within Bluetooth range. Yeah, I, this this whole thing is insanely funny, but it's also super corrosive because it's it's a you don't have to interact with a homeless person, and b the whole premise is that some homeless people deserve basic things right. and others don't, and it's like. That's a very weird place to go as a culture. Well, it's a very like, normal place. The place we're at right now, in our meritocracy, as you said, people are where they are because they deserve it. But our so our, our safety net systems, at least, you know, pretextually, are not meant to discriminate, right? Right. Shall, but, like, yeah. this is, like, explicitly, if, it, if they're worthy enough, you'll give them money. Well, key, a key thing here is that this is not part of our collective social safety net. This is is meant to facilitate the work of good Samaritans. It's about individual action. It's about things, a thing, a good moral thing you can do personally. That undermines any possible solution to any social problems because by feeling good about doing something individually, you and convincing people they should feel good about that, you preclude the possibility of doing actually needed action collectively there is no way to solve homelessness or any other fucking problem that we have uh by encouraging people to do individual good deeds this our entire life we've heard about recycling and using more efficient light bulbs and this has been sold to us you know because of global warming as these acts we can can do to contribute the the real truth is not a single thing you as an individual could ever do will ever have any um, any impact at a systems level. Sure, yeah, well, I mean that's but the only is... level that matters. There, the, no. any other level does not absolutely does not matter than a system wide level because it it allows people to say that well we could solve these problems if everybody just got on board if everybody made the moral choice we're just not good enough. And this, what this says right here is, you know, if if everybody just gave plenty of money to panhandlers, well, then that would solve the problem. But that... Well, again, it's not to solve homelessness. Yeah. No, it's, course, it's to, but, you know, well, make the interaction less friction, yeah. uh, frictionless. And, and you, yeah, can't, sure. you can't have macro answers without, like, uh, people buying into that, right? And, like, yeah. this is under... Like, human decency is an important thing. Yeah, and absolutely. that can happen person to person on a street corner right but it's important this is like undermining even that which makes the macro stuff that much harder yeah yeah Um, that's what i mean it undermines the the eventual like the need to do something bigger but there's a very funny next paragraph that yeah okay so let's let's uh let's get through this here uh even though beacons are preloaded with ten dollars uh, some homeless people will not accept one. How? Hmm, I wonder they? why. So, okay. Some think it's going to track them and give their info away to the government, right? Well, in fact, the company did initially collect location <laughs> data. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> they make. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, go, go. Uh, but, but stopped in March because it didn't see the benefit. Founder Jonathan Kumar said. Like they had all this data of homeless people walking around yeah. the city like. We can't monetize it. I don't know. <laughs> like what? I mean, yeah. What other benefit would it be for other than just like maliciously tracking people? Like yeah. what, what What would you glean from that data? Really? Yeah, I mean, well, the cynical thing would be you would identify where you're going to make the most money as a homeless person. Right. So you find you, you yeah, can if, if you if the if the end user had access to that data. Yeah. 
Well, not no. It, if you tell your the homeless people, your stable of homeless people, you say we're getting the most impressions on fifth, <laughs> right? You got to be on fifth. <laughs> then all, the, all the homeless no, people. No, I, this is no. the mindset, right? This like, stable of homeless yeah, people. this yeah, is the mindset. But then, like, right, sure, there ha- there'll be too many people on fifth, and they'll be like, listen. I'll give you two dollars to go down to first because there's a lot of people down <laughs> oh there and there's God. not no one with a beacon oh down on God. first, man. <laughs> yeah, the next step is surge pricing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, there's too many people giving. We need to cut. <laughs> you get less. You do your app and it's like we're now taking fifty yeah, percent. We got a huge donation. problem. Uh, people, people in Fremont, uh, they they aren't finding any homeless people uh, to donate to. So uh, we we affect surge pricing, which then surges homeless people into Fremont too. And we all joke about this, but this is the uh, end yes. game. Yeah, this is, this was, this is I'm sure they talked about this. I would not be surprised if they talked about it. Uh, they <laughs> thought they were so fucking clever when they did it too. All this shit. It's just repackaging this, existing technology for otherized groups of people. The entire Silicon Valley culture has really just been about gra- Grabbing money that's on the table, that's been on the table since the invention of the microprocessor, just waiting for Moore's law to come into fruition. Just it's there. It's just you you'd have yeah. to be the first guy to do the one thing. And everything that ha- has come out of Silicon Valley in our lifetimes was literally in the movie Metropolis. Well, that's anyway. true. But uh so <laughs> Well, uh, so it just goes into how, yeah. you know, privacy experts looked into this and they didn't see any problems, uh, <laughs> you know, versus any other app or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. you know, except for the purpose of the app. Other than that, it's fine. Right. Okay, but look, uh, how much money do you think they they take? Off Percentage this? wise? Yeah. Well, uh, this stuff usually works on like a volume basis. So like on the aggregate. So really, you know, you take a, a small percentage of a large number of transactions. Mm-hmm. So so. John, I, I don't know. Uh, is it two percent, something in that range? Seven point five percent. Can you? I mean, it's just like that's, that, that's higher than the rate of interest. Right yeah, now. it's twice as high. You as, could get a, a payday <laughs> loan for like you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a sliding scale. Apparently, maybe I maybe do with surge pricing or not. I have no idea. But yeah, it's as high as seven point five percent is uh their cut of the of the donation. Um, Funded by angel investors and uh, Paul Allen. That's yeah. Vulcan. Oh my god. That's I mean that's the other thing is like even even the like science fiction ideas aren't really that original because really all any of these people do is make themselves fucking rent seeking middlemen. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's it. Yeah. They're just fucking middlemen. Yeah. This is just like a, these. Is the middlemen of fucking panhandling, uh, and then it goes into the founder, and yeah. this is oh, this is where it gets love this. Uh, it gets either really good or very depressing, uh. depending on. The- <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, <clears throat> new article subtitle: High Tech Manifestation. I don't really know what that means, but that's the name of the new subtitle. <laughs> Kumar, a Christian, sees his app as more than just a way to give money. It is a high tech manifestation of the Bible's Good Samaritan. Uh, all right, maybe. I don't know. Okay, if you read the story of the Good Samaritan, it's so much more about uh, about stepping into someone's mess, Kumar said. It's all about going and treating someone's wounds and giving your to-do list and your transportation and your time, not just your money. Well, he's not he's not wrong about that. I mean, if you remember the parable, um, they helped the, the man who's down on his luck and then reached into his pocket and said, I'm going to need a portion of your of your You need eight of your every pittance. 100 yeah. pieces of grain you have. In the actual story. There's just not enough um, profit motive written into the Bible. Sort of my, the, the New Testament goes light on why we need for-profit systems for helping people. It's too much on the altruism. Yeah. I don't think there's really much more in the article. Oh, the the, the last two, the last two lines were good. It was, I think it's the founder, and he's There's talking to all those. Oh. I want to know about this. This. this well, well before we go to the end, I do. I mean, so again, we're talking about human beings. There's a quote from someone in here. There's that old saying: "You can lead a horse to water, yeah, yeah, but you can't make oh, it drink." Fuck. Said off. Graham yeah, Plus. Wait, it gets worse. Co-founder of a, a related app. But if you lead that horse to water again and again and again, they'll probably drink. Again, talking hey. about human beings, <laughs> not horses. Fucking animals. Yeah. 
they make them come once a month for a check-in is also that's yeah. part of it. Yeah, it's they've not, got this a, is not free money. Yeah, they've got to report to <laughs> the, like, the Millionaires Club and then it, I think it doesn't really say what happens. So Yeah, what what involves what checking in for, at the Millionaires for maintaining Club? Maintaining your right. Yeah, or, yeah, your like, dues, you got to pay your dues. See, they should see <laughs> No, it's probably like <laughs> got to get audited you're not bringing in enough money revenue. Money on the table. <laughs> <laughs> money on the table if they have to come in and do that in person cuz this should all be like an automated thing. It should be like every, you know, every few hours they have to like like talk into their their necklace <laughs> and like pass the te- like the Voight comp tests like in the new Blade Runner and like and if they don't it explodes and kills them cells cells no, interlinked like <laughs> cells <laughs> yeah. I just like incentivize I probably like listen Jeff we've had you in the program for a few months you're not just not doing that great look at Carol over there she's crying all the time her numbers are off the charts you need to go sell man sell yeah you gotta coach these people to success you don't just become a successful homeless person you know on day one uh but uh yeah Colin you're right the last paragraph of the article is um wow it's pretty amazing so okay uh <clears throat> Whether or not this is a solution to homelessness remains to be seen. Uh, It's not. Well, it's not. (laughs) Uh, But curiosity surrounds the app. At the Millionaire Club... (laughs) It doesn't. It's the talk of the town. There's no one talking about it. It's on everyone's lips. (laughs) Except the fucking paper of record in Seattle. Well, now everyone knows about it. Jesus Christ. I'm glad Uh, we're... You know, in episode one, we're getting to the the a central truth that I think will come up in this show if we keep doing it and that's that the Seattle Times fucking sucks <laughs> uh, go on okay uh, with that said at the millionaire club Nadia Caravan was about getting uh, was getting her first beacon Catherine Brown a grad student and volunteer put it around <laughs> Caravan's what, she doesn't get a cut oh so, so Catherine Brown oh. grad student and volunteer putting putting the necklace around the beacon <laughs> excuse me Around car- uh, around the neck of uh, Caravan. Wow, Caravan said. <gasps> yeah, Brown said. It's like the future. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, first of all, Scott Greenstone, Seattle Times oh, staff reporter... Fuck. Pulitzer is in the mail. <laughs> this is incredible journalism. Yeah, they're, um, they're going to have to change the, the heading to say winner of that's, 11. That's <laughs> that is deeply fucking bleak. Oh, yeah. If that it's dark. is the future. Yeah, that, it's the illusion of progress for sure. And I love that there's, I, I don't know for sure, uh, but you get the sense that this company is probably using free labor or virtually free labor. Maybe yeah. they're even getting grants from the government. But yeah, the for student profit, is a volunteer, which is so. which is just cut. so emblematic of capital in the 21st century. You know, the contracting mindset. Yeah, it's well, absurd. I I made the mistake of clicking on the comments just now, which Ooh. is like you never read the comment. But there's yeah, one person who's like, even though I'm gainfully employed, can I use this app too? And you're like, oh, fuck yeah. What, what if you're just like barely getting by and you're like, I have a shitty story too. And I, I beg for money on the Gu- street. Guys, guys. Okay. Um, Seattle sucks feature. I go down to the millionaires. Club. <laughs> I get in line and like tatter up my clothes, have them do up a profile for me. And I get a little. I get a little a, a beacon. A be- beacon. That's a the be- word I was looking for. A beacon of the, hope the to wear around my. Does, it, uh, does <laughs> it like? Does it like glow under your shirt like Iron Man? Yeah, I think it's like you know when you go to a really terrible restaurant in a mall and they give you those little hockey pucks. Oh f- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably like you know wakes you up, right? You haven't been beaconing recently. Yeah. Get out. Get on the street. Oh God, does it have? Does it like talk to you like Alexa? Probably. Because that. Yeah, would- and it's probably like vendor number. Number A B one two three. <laughs> that's, that's the next version. Right? Like if this takes off, like it'll talk and like yeah. Um, Better than the voice in your head. The homeless, right? You know, if you walk up to it with the app on, the necklace will start talking instead of its wearer, <laughs> and it'll like introduce you and say like this is and do a bit from their bio and like. Don't feel like you need to shake his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Avoid <laughs> eye contact. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh God. Front page. Yeah, Front that's, page. that's great stuff. I'm glad that we've got an app for that. And I'm realizing now not a, not a single critic of the app or, or was like in that story. 
There's so much curiosity. Just, Everyone's just so <laughs> curious about this app. Yeah, that's What's a, the that, future like? That sentence is doing a lot of work <laughs> because that is that is covering. So I do want to make one comment. I think I think you were saying, John or Greg, that like what's stopping anyone from using this? And when you think about it, how different is this really from something like GoFundMe? It's the same thing. Totally. Again, ghettoized specifically. For yeah, homeless. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's the same idea. And in fact, it's almost exactly the same because people write their sob story and then you can give them money or not based on the their sob story. This is one, though. Oh, you God, know, this is just Go depressing. Yeah, it's, Holy it's dark. GoFundMe and Kickstarter, it's donor based, right? It's the, the users who, who donate are like probably got into like donate to like funding a boutique puzzle or something you know they're like some tech bro who wanted like a set of like warhammer figurines that <laughs> they could only produce if like twenty five thousand people like ordered oh, them yeah, ahead yeah, of time yeah. um but then you know they see somebody who has like um in our society who has terminal cancer and and whatever. didn't have health insurance right and they're like oh, okay i'm already here i just love the no. gofundme probably got pitched this and they're like all we do is fundraise for people who are about to die and don't have health insurance. And they're like, eh, this is even a little too icky for us. <laughs> yeah. um, why don't you try some angel investors? Uh, so yeah, everyone go out there, download uh, Samaritan right now, get it, get it going and see who's in your neighborhood. Uh, just cruise around and be yeah. alerted <laughs> when homeless people don't abuse that yeah. knowledge or that technology, please. Holy just, shit. I mean, if you were a cop, you could just walk if around. If you were a cop, oh, if those fuck fucking people yeah. on the, the yeah. next door yeah. Yeah. pay the Save next Seattle. door oh. or, or yeah. the Save the Seattle Magnolians. people at that thing, if Watch the Magnolia the people yeah. got a hold of that, they could hunt them down and administer <laughs> yeah. some, you know what, frontier justice. <laughs> they just drive around <laughs> and wait for the beep and then Dude. just like, yeah. holy shit. Okay, we're recording now, so whenever you okay. want to go. Okay, so we want to um, highlight this guy who is running in the 36th district in Seattle. That's where Colin and I both live. That's uh, Queen Anne, Magnolia, like West Ballard. Yeah. Um, his name is Matt Dubin, and this is a campaign ad from uh, Mr. Dubin. When you are injured in a car accident or in another accident caused by someone else, is this a campaign? The law offices of Matthew D. Dubin is committed to providing compassionate service while going yeah, to this, any this length to protect your right to a full, just compensation. Any Above length. Board, we work closely with clients to secure your rightful compensation and to free you from any legal worries, so you can focus on yeah, recovering from your uh, injury. That's the this we is Matt Dubin. He's a personal injury lawyer <clears throat> who. Uh, He's running in the 36th, and Colin and I uh, took a look at him. Colin, I think you had some some choice bits you wanted to read. Well, sure, yeah, I do. Uh, so he's running under the nom de guerre, there is no them, dot US. Well, that's the domain. So there is no them is sort the of his... domain de guerre. <laughs> domain de guerre, yeah. Is so that the, like an anti-trans... Uh, <laughs> No, right, yeah. that, he refuses to call people by their proper pronouns yeah. or their desired pronouns. Well, so they're okay. So I should I should sort of lay a little uh, backstory to this because I noticed some talk on next door about there is no them. In addition to seeing, oh, he's getting buzzed. Yeah, he's, he's getting, getting buzzed. Buzz. So I he's think signs he everywhere. he appeals to a certain uh, kind of voter, a certain kind of person. Um, so, so I said, okay, I, I have to check this out. These signs are everywhere. People, are, all these people, I really like. All my neighbors on next door that love homeless <laughs> people like me, they are talking about this guy. And so, so we check it out, right? And so the first thing to remark on, I think, is this ridiculous branding that looks like some fucking micro brew logo. Yeah, like an something. ice cream <laughs> totally. like an ice cream parlor. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yes. yeah. There is no them, it says, right? Yes. So and then <laughs> Oh God. Oh. oh my God. It's horrific. Yeah, it's awful. It is awful. It's awful. It's, it's, folks it's like a is red what it is. Robin logo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like it should say young life or something. Yeah. But uh <laughs> so he's one thing that we should talk about is that he's running as a libertarian and he wanted to get out in front of this. So on on his website, there is no them.us, he's got a page called What the L? 
Okay. Nice. So Relatable. yeah. So what the hell? So he's he he explains it, and basically the gist is he would prefer to run as an independent, mm. but he's so opposed to the uh, political duopoly. This is a quote that he believes that there should be a viable nonpartisan third party. And he sees that partisanship in- bad working together. Good. Okay. Well, I'm going to throw some fucking water on that because <laughs> he went, he was a delegate in 2012 in Tampa, Florida at the RNC for Ron Paul. He's a, he's an old school Ron Paul head. Strike one, Matt Dubin. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a, no, he's a libertarian. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So, uh, most of the things that I wanted to address are in his ridiculous campaign ad. We are all members of one community. Oh. We are all affected by the policies that we enact as a community. Oh, communitarian. My name is Matt Dubin. Okay. We're I'm all in this for together. Washington Great. State representative in the 36th district. Uh-huh. I moved to Seattle in 1992 to attend law school at the University of Washington. Graduated in 1995 and started practicing law right away. Oh, right away. Representing for you. injured Immediately. people in claims mostly Unlike against big not insurance practicing law. Law. We, I live we, in we Magnolia, part, in the though. heart of the 36th. Back here. Representing injured people in claims mostly against big insurance companies. I live that's in what, Magnolia, libertarians in the heart hate of big the 36th district. That's what he district. said. That's how he I says I'm, a pers- I'm an ambulance chaser. I married my wife in 1999. Chaser. We have an eight-year-old son, Abe. And a dog okay. and two cats. Yeah, he's a the human The reason why being, I'm running is because on. I see the divisions in our society and I see what it's producing. It's producing anger and it's producing resentment and it's producing fear. Yeah. I want my son to grow up in a world where we love each other. I believe that world is possible. <laughs> oh, man. And I don't see, care this enough like Martin to Luther King. out for that. Does he have a mental... At the root of my <laughs> is that a battle of ideas doesn't have to become a battle between people. Okay, yeah. Uh, can you, can you pause it there? So, yeah. so that, that right there that we kind of talked over a little bit, he said, at the root of my philosophy is that a battle of ideas doesn't have to become a battle between people. So this is a guy who basically thinks he's above politics and emotion and that only logic should rule, uh, which if you've been around for, I don't know, the last probably decade, you know that politics is just intensely uh, emotional in a, in a lot of ways and that not everything is logical per se. And to look at things through that lens is, I think, pretty naive. Well, I mean, this is, it's part of a whole sort of desire, which is very, like a very much a democratic thing too. He could be running as a Republican or as a Democrat in this, ironically, because. I was going to say, that could be any, you could put anything on. Yeah, it anything means absolutely yeah. nothing. nothing. But, yeah. <laughs> but there nothing. is, it, it. it's like empty platitudes, but it is a real like worldview that we have it's this very neoliberal worldview that says that politics are bad that we just need to that all this fighting this partisan bickering is what the problem is so all what we need to do is have smart people come together to find the clever solutions you know but the truth is that that's that's fucking bullshit because we know what the solutions are they're it's not a fucking mystery that we need to that people are poor because of the upward redistribution of wealth. Okay, so like progressive taxation that was repealed over the last forty years has something to do with that. But it, but you know, if you could just say no, we need to come up with some clever things, you obfuscate the obvious. Basically, we should email him about Samaritan. It could get in his platform. Oh my like, god, that's we should, a, oh, there is no them. Uh, it's just uh, us. I looked into his homelessness platform, <laughs> yeah. quote unquote platform. We can get into that later. Yeah, um, Samaritan's yeah. not we on can, it. Let's go to yeah. some of this stuff right now. So like, it's it's all the same thing restated many times. Yeah. It's like healthy politics is win win. It recognized that community is one body, not a collection of separate groups. Okay, so like, yeah, we're all in this together. Inclusive politics measures its effectiveness by its impact on the well-being of real people. So oh, great, stupid. a welfare state that's concerned <laughs> with like providing the the material needs of people. And then he goes on to say. Impact on the well-being of real people, not the strength or righteousness of its intentions. And you go, what the fuck yeah, what does, does that, that mean? fucking mean? And what it, 
I guess what it means is it's this libertarian con. Well, it's actually brilliant because it means any co- conflict is bad. Yeah. <laughs> and if I have more than you and you want to take it from me, ooh, I, now we're in conflict. Can't right. do that. So, like, if you're... <laughs> If you're a, a personal injury lawyer in Magnolia and you're a, a libertarian, this is a great philosophy. It's like, whoa, <laughs> uh, no, I don't agree with that. Let's go back to the drawing board. Yeah. yeah. And the Democrats do the same thing. It's a way to shut down questions of us versus – there is an us versus them. There are rich people and everybody else. And, there are peop- and then on the side of rich people are dorks like this who carry water for them, who invest themselves in these complicated ideologies – libertarianism specifically about you know this like w- worship of negative liberty or whatever <laughs> and that that really at the end of the day is just a flowery tarted up few steps removed way of being against taxation that's <laughs> I, all it is why are the next door people at, like why would i uh he doesn't okay, say he okay. hates homeless people well so yeah. he so let's well. go in, let's go into his his homelessness <laughs> platform um this just reads like any corporate like shareholder report so yeah it's like bullshit yeah. words that mean <laughs> yeah. so this is one of synergy the, this is one of the main things he talks about the cycle picture if you will like a triangle of arrows sort of like the re- recycling symbol but he's got this this tripart like uh platform that has to do with what he sees as three issues that create a cycle that reinforce each other that are very important to us and they are homelessness okay i'm with you there yep um addiction okay Uh, i'm all for um addressing addiction by massively increasing treatment and 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 reforming the criminal justice section and finally property crime (laughs) (laughs) everyone knows that uh property crime leads to addiction and homelessness yeah yeah that's a very weak bone to throw i would like where's the incarcerate the homeless oh well where's the red meat well here we go i mean he's no because he has this veneer of like of love and kindness but like you get down to the root of it well we all should expect to be safe in our homes unfortunately when we look at crime statistics in seattle we have good reason to be worried well, no, we don't. We have, while we struggle as a community with the problems of homelessness and drug addiction, our property crime rates are going through the roof. There it is all in one sentence. You know, he's basically like, he's, this is the red meat. It's homeless people that are, are causing rampant property crime. Yeah. Okay. This is the oldest fear in, Amer- in the American middle class. It's like the terror of having your car prowled. Um <laughs> Uh, Seattle is the highest rate of property crime among the 20 largest cities in the United States. Is that tr- even true? That doesn't, that sounds insane. I don't insane. know. Yeah, that trust property anything, crime? this I mean, guy, yeah. any stat he has. I don't know. No. Uh, that sounds very worked over, like very uh, cherry picked. Um, simply put, now here's where he gets to it. Simply put, our police are overworked and understaffed. According to FBI crime data for 2016, Seattle has fewer than 20 police officers for every 10,000 people. That's a cop for every 500 people. Uh, That sounds like fucking plenty. Chicago and New York each have more than double that. Um, Yeah, there are even more brutal police states. Uh, So basically, his thing is, I don't... And we can go into his homelessness issues, but basically, everything is a cute way of saying... Let's not pay for anything except more cops. <laughs> and Seattle is actually, real statistics, an incredibly safe city when oh it comes God, to, yeah. to real crime, like murders, mm-hmm. assaults. Yeah. Um, I don't know about right. property crime, but it's like if you're, what are the metrics you really care about? Yeah. Uh, not having people get shot, it would be like more important to me. Than yeah, I, I looked into the property crime claim, and it is a very worked over stat. Like Seattle is up there, but it's not the worst, right? Um, but the thing is, it's all, like, petty larceny. Mm-hmm. It's not even, like, burglary, which is, like, okay, yeah, that's pretty violent. You have to break into someone's home or whatever. We it's got like too many street artists. low-level <laughs> crime. We're talking yeah. about, like, the good crime, right. <laughs> more or less. Like, yeah. if, you, if anything happens, like, you know, your car gets broken right. into, you're a you're big deal, right? It's cost, yeah. like, a couple hundred bucks to get your window replaced. And and you, you show up to work late, God forbid, yeah. right? Like, that's the worst that can happen to but this, you. It, and it, but really, it's all a part of vilifying homeless people is what this is ultimately about. Yeah. And wh- that plays. Which is why... Among yeah, suburban That's why Seattle. it appeals to Magnolia, because um, this is their primary anxiety 
for sure right now is that there's something lurking in their garage ready to steal whatever they have in there to sell for drugs. You just drugs. hear that beacon coming towards <laughs> yeah. you. You see the, <laughs> oh, the ring, oh, the flashing ring. I, I'm just thinking <laughs> of uh, like Anton Shugar from uh, No Crunchy for Old Men with his detector going off in his car. And it's like getting like more <laughs> beep, 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 <laughs> And then meanwhile, yeah, you're dude, just sitting that, there like. He is a model for frontier <laughs> justice for sure in that movie. Uh, but this also like t- touches upon something and we'll get even deeper into this in, in another segment. Segment, but the uh, the sort of cycle of homelessness, which, which where addiction is in there, and I just would go on the record. There are a lot of rich people that are addicted. Yeah, fuck and they're not yeah. homeless. Yeah, uh, a, lot a lot of lawyers struggle <laughs> <laughs> with addiction yeah. problems. So Seriously. like, let's not like. I'm, yeah, I mean, the homelessness is the issue, not the addiction or the property crime. Those well, let's, things let's come there. without you, regardless. Well, that's my thing about the the moralism of like that you can't buy beer with your Samaritan. Like, yeah, yeah. all of us when well, we've had a fucking shitty day at work or like people are smoking pot or they're drinking or you're like but uh, god forbid someone living on the street like the most hellish (laughs) existence possible god forbid they have a beer to take the edge off hey every time i crack open a beer right before i do it i go do i deserve this beer (laughs) (laughs) and then i go a little mental math in my head and usually nine out of ten times i deserve that beer and i open it and drink it but sometimes you put it back (laughs) because you know what you believe in the system (laughs) that fridge door opens back (laughs) isn't there like a 50 cent tweet about that and like he only masturbates when he he deserves <laughs> it. Oh, he my like God. He, he's done his work can, creating yeah. that content. Yeah, yeah. he's got to yeah. feel like he deserves it. <laughs> One particularly grating thing that he said was, "We shouldn't be using politics to force our worldview on people who don't share that worldview." And Except what the homeless? Well, what else is politics but a <laughs> worldview, right? <laughs> like, isn't it to convince in, people inherently a a worldview. That's why this so this is a con. It's yeah, it's just absurd. But he believes it. He really does believe he's it. A, this is the thing. It's almost it's almost unfair that we're picking on this guy <laughs> because like picking on a libertarian is like bullying like a slow child. <laughs> yeah. Like we like we well, eventually we'll have to get into some like Democrats and maybe some actual Republicans. But like this guy, it's too easy. he's a he's a dumb fuck. And um, and again, libertarians do not believe in fucking car insurance or uh, <laughs> or frankly statutes that would allow this you guy to wanted sue Ron Paul company. to be president, ages of consent, yeah, etc. Like, like this motherfucker, like this guy wants. You shouldn't you be know. allowed to be a plaintiff's attorney and a libertarian. They should just be like, no, you can't. <laughs> you can't do it, fucker. Well, yeah. all libertarianism, is, uh, libertarianism is a con, right? Because you get people to believe in some aspect of like libertarianism, and then. And it just turns out you're like a horrible, you know, Ron Paul, Rand Paul esque person, and you just institute, you know, policies to enrich in other people. But the whole way to get into that is like, hey man, I I, I want to decriminalize drugs. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm yeah. just like you, you know. Meanwhile, it, none of that's actually no one's decriminalizing anything. <laughs> and at the root of it, it all just benefits rich people. I yeah. think like at any given time, there are multiple people out in the world thinking up every possible worldview and some percentage of them will publish those in some way most of it will never be heard but any weird shit that somehow can be used to the benefit of the very wealthy is going to get amplified by those people and this is like this nothing new libertarianism it's just it's repackaged shit but like um they all love their rand Ayn Rand, is a, she's just a crank like many others who just happen to have... None of them have read it, by the way. I'm convinced of this. That like oh, I 99% certainly have. Percent of shit. libertarians yeah. have never cracked open Some any them, serious literature. I think if you're very stupid, you can actually get through it. It's like if you can't... If you can really turn off... If you don't have a brain to turn off, you can just like plow I, through it. I haven't fucking read it because I value my time. <laughs> yeah, as no. clearly as God, this no. podcast demonstrates. But, like, but, but why? You, you watch the movie, Alex. But she's just a, a nut. <laughs> we crank. all watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, we've seen the movie. I've yeah. seen it. that's what we've I know. gone gold. The, yeah, but like she's just a crank with crazy ideas. But because they could be, because it was evident that they could be used to justify uh, disme- They, you know, they were about like a reaction against the New Deal. Just, and could be used to inculcate people in these ideas that could make them um, hostile toward taxes and the welfare state, then it it's promoted. And, like, it gets twisted in all kinds of other things. But 
at the base of all of it is just uh, progressive taxation is bad. And while we're at it, all taxation is bad. And um, any social programs are bad. So let's see. So, okay, on his page, um, he says there are like almost 12,000 homeless individuals in King County. Um, public spending for each one is 16000 annually, even though this is enough to rent a studio apartment in Seattle, barely, but um, a typical sheltered homeless resident gets just a mat in a communal space that does nothing to break the cycle of homelessness. And that you know doesn't mention the fact that actually a lot of people are just living under bridges and in tents, the ones that aren't fenced off now by the city. Thanks. Uh, yeah. At Mary great Jenny. expense too. Yeah. Um, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, we have an oh, obligate. So, okay. I'm with him on all this. This is bad shit. Um, there's a ton of homeless people. He's at least, you know, he wants to talk about that. We have an obligation to provide our homeless neighbors with safe shelter in the short term and in the long term term to ensure that sure that homelessness is rare, brief and one time. Such a solution requires not just a shelter, but also integration and empowerment. Hey, I'm all for that. That sounds great. The way to deliver it has already been developed in our very own backyard. A series, Samaritan. A series of tests. Sense. <laughs> um, okay, so all that that intro, the very real Prison. problems of homelessness. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably what he, that's. I mean, that's what is implied by the we need more cops to address yeah, the cycle yeah. of homelessness mm-hmm. and addiction. But um, but okay, the the way to deliver. That has already been developed. This is his. This is all he has. This is the end of the page on homelessness, and this is what he's got: the block project started here in Seattle involves putting tiny, self-sufficient houses in the backyards of volunteers throughout the city with permission of all the residents on their block. My God. The homes are legal. All the residents. Yeah, that's a key. That's a key here. The homes are legal under current zoning laws. They are environmentally friendly and are spread across the city and are spread. He's talking theoretically here. This is the plan. This isn't a thing that exists. Everyone gets a homeless pet. That's how we're going to do it. Every neighborhood gets their own homeless. <laughs> and you'll know if they're gone because you're the Samaritan now. Yeah. Yeah. You, you laugh. You laugh. You can but actually put one of those um, you know, know, invisible, invisible fence. uh, fences <laughs> and where you don't leave the block. Yeah. Until you've earned it. Yeah. Until you've got enough so you write me on your profile. Well, a persuasive <laughs> essay. <laughs> Once you have, you know, with three demerits, you reverse the polarity and they're not allowed back onto the block actually <laughs> okay but no this is this is basically it because says to house every homeless one of us in king county oh they're one of us we would need fewer than half of all residential blocks in seattle to build just one block of oh that's it just <laughs> half of every residential block would have to agree to house then pay for themselves yeah. the building of a, a a, sh- a Home Depot shed that's off the grid with a chemical toilet. God, this Greg, is you're fu- just too, you think so small, man. Oh you're so God. stuck in the past. This reaction, this is brilliant. I'm obviously next door. People are volunteering right now. <laughs> They've already are signing homeless mm. people. What yeah. I want to know is yeah. how do I convert my chicken coop that I have right now <laughs> to to address this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do, do, are there yeah. like stages? You know, you can work your way up. You st- first of all, you start in like um, Rainier Beach, right? But you can get to a Magnolia mm-hmm. block mm-hmm. if you really play your cards right. Yeah. There will never be a Magnolia block. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna say like. like <laughs> it would be funny if he's like, and listen, we're gonna start in West Seattle. That's where all <laughs> the first blocks are gonna be. That's it. End of page. That's his whole thing. He sets up his tripart like nexus of our social problems one of them is homelessness and this is it he's like a totally non-profit uh non-governmental voluntary program where much like samaritan individuals lots of fucking individuals have to individually decide and then put in a lot of effort in their own lives well I, it's also important to know that this has been tried I think, and with success in the early 90s on the television show Step by Step. Uh, so I say give it a chance. That's all. Oh, man, this is like, uh, this is 
This is a classic. Yeah, how have we not translated this? Yeah, I mean, like, people, like, they'll, rec- they'll remember. They're like, oh, yeah, like, what was his name, Cody or something like that? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the guy that lived in the trailer in the backyard. It's the Cody thing. It's the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air a model. Exactly. Yeah, small, yeah. And you invite someone into your home. Living with your well, yeah, then, uncle in Magnolia. You <laughs> refer to them as Cody, so everyone's going, how's your Cody? <laughs> <laughs> I think you, he's you doing pretty well. You pull out your Samaritan <laughs> app and you show them <laughs> yeah. pictures. Here's my know. little Cody. He's growing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Half of all residential blocks fuck it's off. It's not even worth time. Well, it's again, stupid. It's again, stupid. it's like idiotic. it's this belief that people will just know that they should do that because that's the right solution. No, but but it isn't. I don't think he believes that. No, what I, he believes I do. is that if these options exist, if these moral choices exist for you to make, then. And if someone doesn't make them, well, we can't. That's what he says. We can't. We shouldn't force our ideology on anybody. We shouldn't force these choices on anybody. If 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 not everybody makes those choices, well, we've done all we can as a society. That's what he means. That's his libertarianism. If we don't individually make these choices on mass, but atomized, the, and society doesn't improve, well. That's the limit. That's all actually, we can and actually, should do. Actually, veto power to your neighbors is very unlibertarian. That's my land, motherfucker. Yeah, right. Like, you know, I I could have I'm a fifty sovereign homeless fucking citizen. people I back put, here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I could I, scatter <laughs> needles throughout my front yard and invite your kids over. Actually, and you can't do shit. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, like IRL, uh. Seattle sucks feature number two. We all start camping on Colin's lawn in Magnolia <laughs> and see if we have a run in with Mr. Frontier Justice. The obvious question here is why is our fucking society creating people yeah. who are homeless in massive numbers, not just Seattle, but everywhere? What that is just part of the the machinations of our society, the way the machine runs, it generates lots and lots of very poor people and then many of them become homeless. So, like, what? what's your answer to that, asshole? I'm Matt Dubin. I'm running for state representative in Washington's 36th legislative district. We all know the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. New the Testament problem with Bible the golden shit. rule is not everyone wants to be treated the same way. I could treat you the way what? I want to be treated, Jesus was but a that might not be what you want. I actually try to live by the platinum rule. It says do unto others as they would have done unto them. What I the believe what? That's one of the that primary work? roles the, of government we should have started is to with empower this. you <laughs> yeah. to I'll engage in shit. the pursuit of what? happiness. However you see fit, government can't make you happy, but it can empower you to pursue happiness on your own. And your way might lead to this, failure, and you might it. fall down and have to get yourself back up and try again. You Call. might be poor. And that's okay. And you might you can try you again be poor. and again and, might still and again. Be poor. You have the right to pursue happiness your way. Including poverty. Until you find the solution that works for you. Or don't. <laughs> <laughs> the platinum rule. Alexa, play Seattle Sucks podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. That was, that's the best thing I think of the that's, night. That yeah, was perfect good. segue into our next topic, which is the uh, adventures of Jeff Bezos and Amazon Strikes Back. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Q, yeah, whatever. Uh, the <laughs> Amazon <laughs> Uber Alice. We, all right, we have a homelessness crisis in Seattle, as we've discussed. I uh, There are a lot of really good solutions out there. Samaritan mm-hmm. app. Um, everyone adopts a homeless person on their block. Uh, but, you know, there are also these, like, very uh, old way of thinking about, like, investing in public housing and mental health services and all that kind of boring stuff. But through the, the vehicle of progressive taxation well, that stuff is not free yet so it costs money to do that what? and so our our city council uh because we in washington have the most regressive tax structure in the country um we have limited options to raise revenue and one is the employee head tax which um would place i forget the exact amount it's pretty minimal 
amount per year per employee. $500. Yeah. No, it's per it's per hour yeah. per employee yeah. at first, and then eventually it's just a very small uh, payroll, payroll tax. tax a few years down the road. But it's, only applies to companies with $20 million a year in revenue. Yes. I yeah. mean, so it's, yeah. it's targeted at the Amazons, the Costcos, the Nordstroms, like the companies that are doing incredibly well. It's sponsored by councilpersons Sawant, Gonzalez, and Mosqueda. But I think they, they have other people on on the council on board right now as well. So they it's have, not like it's... They have um, the votes. You need five votes to pass it on the council, and they have the votes right now to pass it. And then... Uh, it, but it has not passed yet. And so this week, uh, Amazon... What did they do? An interview with some... They released a statement or whatever that said, pending the outcome of this vote, we are... Uh, well, it was reported we're stopping construction on buildings in Seattle. Oh my God! What? Oh my God! Oh no! The cranes aren't moving. <laughs> the cement's not pouring. <laughs> we have the most cranes of any city in the country for the thousands and thousands yeah. of construction workers were laid off <laughs> on the spot. Is so, that what happened? That's what you would get from listening to. Fucking yeah. So so far the proposal radio. is working fantastically. Yeah. Uh, we're stopping the endless construction going on <laughs> in the city. Great. I can yeah. actually draw. I can actually walk down a sidewalk <laughs> without having to cross about seven right. or eight crosswalks to dodge the debris that's falling. Right. Stuff. Yeah, but from the breathless coverage in the media, you would think they were literally detonating uh, buildings or construction, <laughs> and, like burying construction workers in the rubble. What they actually did is stop planning on one development, so there's no construction underway. They paused the planning, and they said they might sublease uh, a future building that they've already agreed to lease that's currently under construction and is continuing to be built. That was it. So maybe, possibly, hypothetical people won't be coming into Seattle. In, like, five years or something. Cool. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. shaking in my pants. Or, or they might sit on some of the most valuable real estate in the country sure. and just sit on that empty lot. <laughs> and they're like, well, we'll just never build anything there. You know. <laughs> the headlines everywhere are the headline of the show, which is, like, Amazon strikes back. Like, they're fighting back against something. Yeah. And it really is just a fake fight. They, they haven't done anything. They but, paused planning of something but really that that tells you everything because they didn't need to do anything all they were looking for was this response that says we have to be afraid of amazon and what they might do yeah that's the issue this is about their power in this situation this is about their ability with the tiniest thing to hold the city hostage over the smallest tax measure right so it's both like an immediate threat, like go ahead, Seattle City Council, cross the line, right? <laughs> See what happens. But it like totally, and, and again, no one really reported it. It just misses the fact that they are already like stepping out on us with 20 other cities around the country to yeah. find their next like lover. Well, and that, <laughs> like they're already <laughs> fucking us. The HQ2 saga or whatever, that is also, it's the same purpose, just on a much larger scale. It's to demonstrate and consolidate their political power in this situation. They came to Washington State in the first place because it has no fucking income tax here. And now they're huge. And because they're an enormous part of the economy in this city and a part of the growth over the last decade, they, by announcing that they want a second headquarters, they are made everybody really deep down realize that they we're beholden to them. And in such a way that other cities will actually compete with each other to also be beholden to Amazon. That's the power they have. The whole premise is that we are we are good because we bring jobs, period. And that's the end of our relationship as a civic partner with any place. It's like, we bring jobs, so take care of us. And it's a little bit out of the Boeing playbook, frankly. I mean, this is, oh, not, yeah. this is not a new yeah. tactic. But it just misses that like, there's more... There's more to being uh, an institution and growing a city and, and making it thrive than just pretending that the city around you doesn't exist. Like Amazon should be uh, on the front lines with us trying to solve the homelessness crisis, solve our infrastructure crisis. This is the fastest growing company in the history of the world, I think. Like Jeff Bezos yeah, has a hundred billion dollars. Yeah, like why why do we have to go to them and beg? you know, please chip in to help us. They should be like coming to us saying, listen, guys, we're going to, you know, make all these positive investments in the community. Right. Right now, they are 
firing back against this very modest proposal that's, of course, being treated like it's a f- communist fucking revolution. Incredibly modest. But it's this very small tax that is a way of reinstating progressive taxation. I mean, r- over the course of our lifetimes, over the last f- 40 years, progressive taxation has been repealed in this country. Um, we never had it here in Washington, but... In no way, so Amazon basically pays no tax. So the idea of this head tax is to tax only the very top of companies in the city. For Amazon, Amazon's responsibility is estimated to be about twenty million a year, which is like po- not even pocket change, it's fucking pocket dust. lint. They wouldn't even to Jeff Bezos. Know it, yeah, but that doesn't matter. That's not the point. The same reason they can't pay that tax is the reason they felt the need to go through this whole pageant process to find a second headquarters. They want to demonstrate that they have political power over democracy. They had the gall to go around the country and saying, like, make us the best package with basically all just amounted to the lowest taxes. Whoever can promise us that we will pay no taxes and, hey, potentially even get, like, a positive subsidy, that is, like, it should be a giant billboard that says... We don't live in a democracy anymore. Seattle is a feudal society at this point. Yeah. And there are communities clamoring to become the next feudal society. Yeah, they're begging. They're yeah. begging at the feet of Baron Jeff to be the next like part of his realm. Yeah. You know? I just want to make it clear yeah. that in this feudal society, I am a peasant and not a serf. Yeah. Which very, means that I am free to take my labor um, where I please. And so I'm, I hold that over all you other serfs. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's important. Yeah, a serf is legally bound to the land and to the lord who owns that land. But in a way, we've kind of inverted that in the 21st century in Seattle because we, as a city, are bound, serf-like, to Amazon. That's what they're demonstrating. And it's, and it's uh, well, one, I mean, Alex had a good point earlier about, like, it's a fake threat. Like, it's bullshit. they're not going to leave Seattle. That would would make no sense. They are entirely driven by self-interest and that makes no sense to abandon uh, your corporate headquarters, <laughs> right? Like, um, capital flight is You can't a real sell thing. the spheres. Who's going to buy the spheres? Yeah. Nobody. Right, but capital flight is a real thing. And yeah, but it's, all, it's already up. happening. They're yeah, already If HQ2 hadn't happened, I think this would be a much more real thing. But they've they are already out shopping around. Right, for which their means next all flight. those jobs that they could have brought here will now go to another city but in the future they'll have this incredible tool well we need to add uh, another 3000 jobs this year for this new this new segment of the economy that we're decimating at, with loss <laughs> leadering and we need to take over and monopolize we're going to need another 3000 programmers the question is is it going to be Seattle or whatever HQ2 Atlanta or whatever and then till the end of time, they'll be able to arbitrage that shit between the two cities competing down to getting if they already pay no tax. At the end of the day, it's actual like corporate welfare. The the head tax, there's like some debate about like don't tax jobs or whatever, which is it's the best tool we have because we don't have an income tax. And when there was a ballot initiative here in Washington state to to do a high earners income tax, Amazon donated to the campaign against it right so it's like it's like we don't like this tool but we're also not going to give you any other tools to to raise revenue but also i think the council is still going to pass it which actually is the good news like i think there's a lot of things you can get away with in seattle but like seattle nice is one of them and this (laughs) like it riled up a lot of people a lot of the right-wing folks a lot of like angry folks but i think i think it may not work i think a lot of people also like well, fuck you, man. Like, don't. Yeah. That's not how we that, play here. Honestly, that'll be a huge. Ba- if that's the case, that'll be a huge backfire for Jeff Bezos because the twenty million is a pittance to these people. The the important thing is demonstrating that they have this power. Which, if they fail, like that will deeply undercut that shit. Well, and to be fair, they're struggling. You know, I like, I think that's what no one's really pointed out. Yeah, it's like, I, mean the, I mean, do you want them to go out of business? The other thing too, is like, people are wondering like, is this, is, is this Amazon's next fire phone? <laughs> you know, like what, what's going on here? Are, is there going to be a four lease sign on the balls now? Like what's next? It's, it's desperate times for Bezos and company. God, they, they are so embarrassed by that fire phone. I bet it's like, oh, the, like they the, want people to forget so bad. And it was like a, like phone. Jeff led that like with oh. a passion. So I know that's a way to get to him. 
personally is like just bring up the fire phone and be like um oh yeah one other thing too how how's the fire phone doing how, i thought that was a thing right yeah. do people have that no okay so we should now talk about the the context of 20 million dollars and uh and Bezos's wealth, which the only way that I can see to uh, deploy this much financial resource is by converting my Amazon winnings into space travel. Mm. So that's basically Blue Origin is expensive enough to be able to use that fortune, <laughs> um, and I'm currently uh, liquidating about a billion dollars a year of Amazon stock to fund Blue Origin. Yeah, I mean, if Jeff personally wants to be rocketed into Jupiter, um, <laughs> like uh, 2001 style, to create a star child, I'm all oh for that. Oh my God, he <laughs> is the star child that that like smushed little face and that big bald head. Greg, I uh, <laughs> think that uh, the next uh, place that I need to go is to space. <laughs> do oh do you think somebody in the crowd was like, you know, they had their fingers crossed and they're like, come on, Jeff, just fund my life, fund my life. <laughs> Tell me you're going to fund my life. For me, it would feel icky. It would feel gross. And then Fuck. They were hoping for, go space, uh, all right, everyone it. look under your seat right now. <laughs> yeah. you've, got, you've got a Saturn V rock. You get a Blue yeah. Origin rock. You've got a fire phone. Yeah. You've got a fire phone. <laughs> <laughs> we're bringing it back. And yes. uh, if you're really lucky, you get to be on the test flight to go into outer space. <laughs> oh you'll, you'll never come back. The context is the same week they come out against the head tax, yeah. he gives an interview where he says, I'm spending a billion dollars a year on my space program. And it's like, well, can't we do both of these things? Like why, you know, you, we can do both. Yeah, you can could. have your space program and you can fund homeless <laughs> services in your, in the city, your headquarters. Well, this is why he's using his lottery winnings. Yeah. To yeah, do that. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which explains a lot about Amazon is maybe, maybe Jeff just secretly won the lottery and that's the reason <laughs> he won why the they're power able. Ball. Yeah. It's not cloud services. It's no. an hour ball winning. <laughs> Actually, Jeff is just insane. He's hacked lottery <laughs> and he's like just playing Powerball all day. It's all he fucking does in his but office. They, do they, and they, he's allowed to fund his company with Powerball winnings. <laughs> Amazon, it's a great company. But what I don't understand is why him, Musk, all these like titans of industry or whatever, why do they only care about space and shit like that? Why can't they be like, part of my legacy will be like the Rockefellers at least knew set up a fucking foundation and fund some good shit yeah. to like, why is it so crazy that it's like, I'll tell you why do a space why. program in your city. It's you know? specifically because no one is asking for it. Lots of people want to do lots of other things. People like us, people like me want to tax Amazon to pay for a welfare state to redistribute wealth downward to, in this very, very limited progressive taxation case of this Seattle head tax to get 20 million off them to build um, low income public housing. Okay. But we want to do, I'd like to do a lot of that. I would like to tax them a lot more and other rich people and pay for all these social goods. But the second that he does that, the second he says yes to that, he's obligated to that by choosing as his pyramid to build with all of his, wealth something that no one else wants if that fails or if he gets tired of that at some point he can turn that off at any time and it's completely within his control but the second he says you know what you're right we have a civic responsibility to participate in the welfare of our community then they're responsible as you can see with how he's reacted to this head tax by just threatening the t this tiny thing it's just to demonstrate that he is not responsible to us, that he has power to decide where this money goes. And that's what's most important to these people. <laughs> also, I've been keeping tabs. Uh, this is going to be a recurring thing on the show uh, of Jeff Bezos's Instagram account because I want to be just like this titan of industry. Like you said, like I want to, you know, I want him to be my friend. I want to feel like I have a relationship with him. So I follow what's big got going on him on Instagram. And there's been two choice posts. Uh, first of all, there is the uh, cowboy Jeff. I, you know, I can, I can fix prolapsed cattle. Now where he is, uh, <laughs> he's gotten back into his ranch lifestyle that he, uh, he started when he was a teenager. And it's him, you know, in a cowboy hat and cowboy boots, just uh, leaning against uh, a space capsule of some sort in the middle of the desert. 
And as Colin, as you pointed out, like he basically looks like he's cruising. Yeah. <laughs> like the only thing that's missing is the red uh, handkerchief <laughs> in his left pocket. Yeah. He also calls them his lucky boots. That's in the caption. I think maybe I think he's he trying cruising. to score. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, and then, but even even better than Cowboy Jeff <laughs> is his latest Instagram post, where I guess he's inspired by Ralph Waldo Emerson, and he had he took a picture of a quote of Emerson, uh, which is you know pretty par for the course, I think, for Instagram. Uh, but what I'd like to note about this is he's uh, pasted the quote on his refrigerator, which and he says that it's been on his fridge for years mm. now, and it's completely covering his child's artwork. <laughs> it's, it's not like, a joke. Like, like, like you know how, like, when you, a child's like when you, when you have your fridge and, you know, fridge space is, you know, limited, right? And so you kind of have to, like, overlap corners of things, but you're careful not to completely cover something that, you know, you value in life. Jeff is completely pasted over it's, his, his son or daughter's, uh, Artwork with it's this the whole thing. Okay. He's covered the whole picture with a computer printed come. paper. Like it's not even like <laughs> artful. Like, well, I mean, I also want to say he. So he printed this out. Yeah, it's it's like <laughs> it's so stupid. You All definitely right. need to read it. To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends. Hashtag whoa, false friends. Whoa. Fake friends. Not Fake so friends. fun. Um, it's dark. To appreciate beauty. Fine. To find the best in others, fine. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. To leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. Whoa. But he's looked at that for years, and he's like, uh, space. space. I, <laughs> he, he, literally, he literally took it to mean to leave the world richer. <laughs> which is, he, will leave, he will leave planet Earth. <laughs> Well, the next the next uh, line's pretty good too. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. He's like, I'm richer, yeah, and my low. life has that's, breathed easier. That's a low fucking bar <laughs> for a multi billionaire. We should we should read his caption too because it's so oh, he robotic on it. and he re- on it. and just and again we think he writes these right. Yeah. I mean, that's a consensus. This is not. Yeah, I'm sure it gets filtered through some so thing, but no one says no to Jeff. It just says, <laughs> love this quote. It's been on my fridge for years, and I see it every time I open the door. Hashtag Emerson. Also, again, reading the comments, always a mistake. It's just like sick of fans. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I'm sure people love that shit. Well, there is one thing in this quote that we did also didn't touch on was the honest critics, because <laughs> there's a moment where he's... <laughs> He's put a little bit to the fire in one of those interviews and uh, about unions, mm-hmm. right? And so... At the same time, you're aggressively criticized by unions and by media for paying low wages, for inappropriate working conditions. How do you deal with these accusations? My approach to criticism and what I teach and preach inside Amazon is when you're criticized, first look in a mirror mm-hmm. and decide... Are your critics right? Mm -hmm. If they're right, change. Don't resist. No. And then that that line was never really pursued any further. And he goes on to give one example of how they had made a mistake. (laughs) And uh, he didn't mention the fire. Fire No, weird, weird omission. That is very odd. (laughs) That's where, right where I would have gone. The fire phone. (laughs) Well, I consider the fire phone a success. Uh, we learned how to yeah, not make. We learned phones. how to make a terrible phone. <laughs> well, that's yeah. That's the every it's last one of those phone. fire phones went into like a pit and were buried, like like, like the Atari ET e. game. Yeah, they're in Mexico. So every yeah. every one of them has to be found there's and like, destroyed. There's murals in Amazon where they've like gone in and painted over the fire. You know, like Stalin's portraits. <laughs> yeah, sculptures. What are you talking? What fire like phone? Jeff, the statue of Jeff holding a fire phone, and now it's just like some broken fingers. <laughs> Comfortable living and working in space, living and working in space, living and working in space. The solar system can easily support a trillion humans. And if we had a trillion humans, a trillion humans, a trillion humans, 
living and working in space, living and working in space. This civilization I'm talking about, you know, getting comfortable living and working in space and having millions of people and then billions of people and then finally a trillion people in space, in space, in space. We will move all heavy industry off of Earth and Earth will be zoned residential and light industry. Residential and light industry. Residential and light industry. And Earth will be zoned residential and light industry. It will basically be a very beautiful planet. We have sent robotic probes, probes, probes to every planet in this solar system now. And believe me, this is the best one. That's the world that I want my great grandchildren's great grandchildren to live in. And believe me, this is the best one. And Earth will be zoned to a very beautiful planet. This is the best one. This civilization I'm talking about of getting comfortable living and working in space and having millions of people and then billions of people and then finally a trillion people in space, in space, in space. Earth will be zoned residential and light industry. That's the world that I want my great grandchildren, great grandchildren to live in. Beautiful planet Earth, millions of people and then billions of people and then finally a trillion people living and working in space, in space, in space. And Earth will be a very beautiful planet. And believe me, this is the best one. I, you know, I, could, I can fix prolapsed cattle.